Okay, well, it's time to now talk about the nature of matter because biological systems are composed of matter. And so for that, we need to understand some basic chemistry in order to understand how atoms combine into molecules and molecules combine into macromolecules in biological systems. So let's start out with a basic introduction to chemistry. As you already know, matter has mass and it occupies space. All matter is composed of atoms. Uh, and of course, those atoms have subatomic, have, have particles in them called electrons, protons, and neutrons that we'll talk about in a minute. The key point here is that understanding the structure of atoms is going to be critical to understanding the nature of biological molecules because biological molecules form by the bonding together of atoms. And we need to understand atomic chemistry a little bit in order to understand how that bonding occurs. So let's talk a little bit about atomic structure. We know that atoms have protons in the nucleus, and protons are positively charged particles. Neutrons are also found in the nucleus, and they have no charge. They are neutral. They are neutrally charged. And finally, electrons are negatively charged particles that are found in orbitals that surround the nucleus. Now, the electrons are negatively charged, and the protons are positively charged, and their charges are equal. But the mass of an electron is about 1,800 times smaller than a proton. So even though electrons are incredibly, uh, significantly, highly significantly, ha have significantly less mass than a proton, they have, this, they have the equal negative charge that exactly balances the positive charge of a proton. So if we were to look at some simple models in in, uh, in different types of ways, in different representations of atoms. Let's take the hydrogen atom, which is the simplest atom, and composes most of the mass of the universe. Hydrogen has one proton and one electron. It does not have a neutron. Hydrogen is the only atom, the only element that does not have a, a neutron. So here's the proton in the nucleus, and then the electrons are found, the electron is found with a probability distribution that we'll talk about later, uh, around that uh, orbiting or found in orbitals around that uh, proton. And we can represent that schematically here, showing the proton and the one electron then in hydrogen um, around that proton. Now, one notion that will disabuse you of right away is that electrons are found in orbits like the planets orbit around the sun. Uh, rather, they are found in orbitals that we'll talk about shortly, and orbitals do not equal orbits. Taking a more complex atom here, oxygen, uh, oxygen has eight protons, eight neutrons in the nucleus, and eight electrons. And we can draw that here as the, here's the nucleus. There are two electrons found here, and there are six electrons found in a little, a, a little further out. And we're indicating the orbitals that surround the nucleus by these rings, even though we understand that those rings are not genuinely orbits. Rather, they are orbitals, which have complex shapes that we'll talk about shortly. So, when we talk about elements, the um, number of protons equals the number of electrons. And so the atoms are electrically neutral, unless they lose an electron or gain an electron, in which case we'll, we'll talk about cations and anions a little bit later. But let's for now say atoms are electrically neutral because the positive charges of the protons in the nucleus are balanced by the number of electrons in the, um, the negatively charged electrons or orbiting or found in orbitals around that nucleus. And we define a, a number called the atomic number as the number of protons. So the number of protons define what element you're talking about. If you're talking about hydrogen, it has one proton. If you're talking about oxygen, it has eight protons. And that number of protons defines the element. Carbon has six protons, for example. So every atom of a particular element has the same number of protons. And therefore, an element, we, we define an element as any substance that can't be broken down into smaller, into, into another substance, that is, by ordinary chemical means. Um, extraordinary ones can break down elements, but, but ordinary chemical means um, cannot, be, uh, cannot break down an element. So I'm going to reemphasize that every element has the 
same number of protons. All oxygen atoms have, uh, have eight protons. All carbon atoms have eight protons. Now, mass refers to the amount of a substance, whereas weight applies to what happens to mass in the, when the force of gravity exerts uh, on something. So um, the mass of a hydrogen atom on the moon would be the same as the mass of a hydrogen atom on Earth, but it would have a different weight because the, the gravitational force on the moon is a lot less than that on Earth. So what we, we don't usually talk about weight so much as we talk about mass because that's a constant and will be found under any conditions in the universe. And if we talk about the atomic mass of an element, we're talking about the, the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So the sum of the um, protons and neutrons, their mass would be, be the atomic mass of a particular element. And since every proton and neutron has a mass of about one Dalton, which is a very small amount of mass, um, we can calculate the mass of any given, um, any given element based on the number of protons and neutrons it has. So now let's move on to electrons. They are negatively charged particles. They're located in orbitals around the nucleus. And for atoms that have the same number of electrons and protons, those atoms are defined as neutral because the charges of the electrons balance the charges of the protons. But elements, atoms, can lose electrons. And in that case, the, we have an unbalanced state with respect to the pro, number of protons and neutrons. And if a, an atom loses an electron, it becomes a cation because it then has more protons than electrons. So it has a net positive charge. Whereas an anion is negatively charged because it has, uh, it has gained a, an electron, and therefore there are fewer protons in that atom than electrons. So it has a net negative charge. Anion, negatively charged. Cation, positively charged atoms. Now, we've said that the number of protons defines an element, and that that is a constant, that all carbon atoms will have um, six protons, for example. That defines an atom as being carbon. But the number of neutrons can be altered in atoms. And usually that produces radioactivity. So um, if, if, if uh, excess neutrons are present, that is excess in the sense of more neutrons than protons, then that lends instability to the, to the atom. And that produces, um, when, the, when that instability causes decay, uh, particles are emitted from the nucleus. And that releases energy, which we call radiation. And so as the nucleus of an unstable radioactive um, atom breaks up, a radiation is emitted as, as that happens. And we can define the half-life as for a radioactive atom as the time it takes for one half of the atoms in a given sample to decay. And that can be very useful in dating rocks and dating um, fossils. So for example, if we look at carbon, carbon-12, we'll call it, this is the most common isotope of carbon. And isotopes are members of the same element that have different numbers of protons in them. So carbon-12, the most common isotope of carbon, has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons in its nu uh, and, and six, uh, six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus, and six electrons that are found in a cloud um, in orbitals around that nucleus. But let's take carbon-14 over here. Six protons, six electrons. It's a neutral atom. The charges are balanced, but it has eight neutrons in its nucleus. And that lends, that, that creates an instability in the nucleus, which causes radioactive decay of the nucleus and the emission of, of radioactivity, of, radi of radioactive emissions. Now it's time to cover, um, to talk about the ar arrangement of the electrons around the nucleus. And that is essential because the arrangement of electrons around the nucleus defines the chemical behavior of an atom. It, it, it will define how that atom can bond with other atoms in forming molecules. So let's look at the simple model of the atom that is the Bohr atom, the Bohr model rather, I should say. And the Bohr model of the atom 
uh, posits that electrons are found in discrete orbits, analogous to, let's say, planets orbiting around uh, a star. But we know that that simple model is not correct. We know that what modern physics has, has discovered is that electrons are, are defined in orbitals, not orbits. These are not equal. An orbital is not like an orbit. An orbital is a probability distribution that defines where electrons are most likely to be found. That is where they are, um, where they have a high probability or low probability of being found. And so the shape of the orbital describes that probability distribution. And here's another key feature about electron configurations, is that no electron orbital contains more than two electrons. Once an orbital obtains two electrons, then another, another, an additional electron would have to be found in a different orbital. So here is the Bohr model of the atom with the electrons found in discrete orbits around the nucleus, much like planets orbiting a star. But we know that the Bohr model is not accurate. Modern physics tells us that electrons are found in orbitals with varying shapes, and these orbitals describe probability distributions where electrons might be found um, around the nucleus. the electrons are found in probability distributions around the nucleus. So if we say that the nucleus is this little black dot here, we can describe different types of orbitals that have different shapes. And we'll talk about what these 1s orbitals are, 2s orbitals, and p orbitals are shortly. But for example, a 1s orbital, if you were to sample where an electron was, an electron in a 1s orbital around the nucleus, you would find a distribution, a probability distribution like this. There's a high probability that the electron would be found here, lower out here, and pretty low right, right next to the nucleus as well. So imagine this as a sphere around the nucleus that is the shape of a sphere where there's a probability of finding the electron in that particular sphere. A 2s orbital has the following shape. There's a fairly high distribution of finding the electron here, much higher out here, and uh, lower probability out here. Whereas a p orbital has a dumbbell shape. There's a high probability of finding the electron here or here, but um, much less of a probability finding it out here or out here or near the nucleus. The probability is zero, essentially, uh, right next to the nucleus. Now you might ask yourself, well, how does an electron get from here, an electron in a p orbital, how would it get from this point here? To that point there if the probability of finding it is zero at the nucleus. And for that you have to study kind of quantum physics and study the wave nature of electrons to understand that, and that's beyond the scope of this course. So now we need to talk about the arrangement of electrons in their different orbitals and discuss the energy levels that are found uh, that hold the different orbitals that we're talking about. So there are four basic energy levels in atoms that we're, go we're going to discuss. There's the K level, there's the L level, the M level, and the N level at moving out from the nucleus outward. So the first energy level is called K. And the electron orbital that is found at energy level K, there's only one orbital, meaning that energy level K can only hold two electrons because every orbital can only hold two electrons. So there's one, we call this the, the, the orbital that exists at energy level K, the lowest energy level in atoms, is called the 1s orbital. One, because it's at the first energy level, and it is an s-type uh, level, um, it is an s-type orbital rather, I should say, like the spherical orbital shape that I showed you on the previous slide. So the there are two electrons that can be found at the first energy level, and those two electrons, if, if there are two electrons there, they're found in s orbitals at the first energy level, the k energy level. So our next part, we'll talk about higher energy levels.